Hi, welcome to CORE. My name is Kat Thomas, and we are at week five of our yoga challenge. I hope you've been enjoying some of the asanas and finding your strengths and your challenges, because that's what it's about, not perfection, right? I mean, wouldn't it be great if we could be? But this week's challenges, we're gonna start with one minute of Pashimottanasana, or our seated forward bend, and I'll show you some variations that you can use. Uh, next is Kapiyasana, or a variation of Mananasana, which is our monkey pose. Um, that'll be for one minute total. And then Virabhadrasana, warrior two, uh, that'll be for um, one minute each side. And then finally going into our locust pose or Shalabhasana. Um, and again, there are variations on all of these things. This is going to be shown to you by the beautiful J. Wah Fitness, uh, Jessica Wah, who is a partner in CORE. But let's get started on what this challenge is all about. So for your seated forward bend, if you want to use a block or have something uh, underneath your sit bones, go ahead and grab that now. Always suggest that before you do anything, you grab your water, your timer, because there's no reason to go past the 60 seconds. And you come onto your mat or your towel. You're gonna start in Dadasana or your nice strong stack pose. So from here, we're just gonna put the sit bones down, make sure they're rooted firmly into your floor the whole time, drawing those feet up towards the ceiling so the feet are flat, engaging the full length of your legs. And from here, we're just gonna really make sure we elongate through the spine, crown of the head lifting upwards. So this is a great pose just to stay as it is. Again, if you want to use your block, go ahead, sit on that. Or if you want to reserve those props down here to rest your hands during the pose, go ahead and do that. So I like to make sure that I'm aligned first. Inhale, reach those beautiful arms up and overhead. Extend and lengthen through the spine and fold forward. So we're bending at the waist. Crown of the head is reaching for those toes, not reaching for the legs themselves. If you can, take your peace fingers, gently hold those big toes, elbows reaching out to the side. And you're gonna breathe through here. You can allow a natural rise and fall through the belly. If you're not at that point yet where you're reaching all the way forward, then just rest yourself here. You don't have to go too far. You're working your way into your asanas here. And what we're really focusing on is moving through with the addition of the breath to help us push along. So if you don't have blocks and you don't have books that you wanna use, go ahead and use your little pillows. So make those little fists and you can just rest those elbows gently on the outside of the leg. Now, never place anything directly on the knees, on the sides of the knees, you don't wanna do that. And honor your edge wherever you are. So if you're staying with this through one full minute, or if you wanna come in and out for the length of the minute, you're just gonna relax the arms down, draw the navel in, the head's gonna drop, and you're gonna slowly roll up through the exhale, rising tall, connecting one vertebrae at a time. And finally, coming back to your staff pose or dadasana. So I like to smooth the spine out anytime that I'm doing any uh, bends forward or backwards by taking a nice deep breath here and exhale release. So that's pose number one. So for our variation of the monkey pose, monkey pose itself would be a nice long split, and we're not doing that today. So. There's a few ways you can come into this variation. I like to start in Tadasana or Mountain Pose. Now you can either keep the hands for more balance on the hips, or I like to start with my hands overhead, really ground myself down through the heels, connect at the ball of the foot. And then you can let those piggies just kind of rest on the mat lightly. From here, shoulder blades go down through the spine, crown of the head lifting upwards. And I'm going to lift with an inhale, bend this right leg, and just gently exhale as I come back behind me about one meter. 
I'm going to stay on the ball of the foot, and as I exhale, come gently down, creating a 90 degree angle here. And you can adjust as needed, right? Because we don't want that knee going over the big toe in the front. We're going to soften to that chin, soften to the back of the right foot. From here, gaze going forward, lengthen through the spine, shoulder blades going back down, navel's drawn in. We're going to inhale, palms come together above us, and exhale, draw them down to your heart center. So this is the first start of your setup. Okay, now from here, make sure that you're tilting the pelvic floor upwards. And this way, you're going to scissor those thighs, rolling them in towards one another, protecting that lower spine. So on your next inhale, we're going to twist and turn to our left side. Our right elbow is going to drop above that left knee, sinking us down. And from here, we're going to reach the gaze up and over that left shoulder. Palms are in front of our heart center, and we're going to twist and turn using our sound breath like shh. Now, to come out of this, we're going to inhale, turn back to your center. There's a few ways, again, you can do this if you feel really confident with your balance. You can extend the arms above you, drop the shoulders, curl that back foot, and lift, and come back to your Tadasana and then set yourself up for the other side. So I'll do this side so you can see with the hands on the hips. Inhale, lift that left knee, and exhale, slowly draw it back behind you, and then soften to the knee, soften to the back of the foot. Again, make sure you're not going over that front big toe, uncurl that foot, align yourself, draw the pelvic floor upwards, and now inhale, reach the arms high above you, drop those shoulder blades down, navel's drawn in. Inhale and exhale, draw the hands down to your heart center. Spread those fingers, press into the palm. You're going to add a little bit of spice by doing that. So we're set up, we're aligned. We're going to inhale here as we twist now to the right side. Exhale, we're going to drop that left arm. So the elbow is just hanging above that right knee. We're gonna breathe as we reach the gaze up and over that right shoulder. Okay, gaze is up, hands come in front of the heart center. And holding here and breathing with your power breath. So 30 seconds on each side. So shh. And as you are steaming that breath out, you can actually feel your belly, your digestive system, those organs just crunching in. So imagine that you're squeezing out some toxins there. And then again, inhale, come forward. If you want to use a different pose of getting in and out of this, you can actually come with the hands down, curl that back foot, bring the left back to meet the right, and back to downward dog. And you can start your pose this way as well. So if you were to bring your right foot between the hands, drop that knee, create that nice little squared off 90 degrees, and then come from here. Okay, so variation of the monkey pose. So from here, now we're gonna go to warrior two pose. So the alignment in warrior two is extremely important, especially since we're holding one minute on each side. So we're gonna come up to our Mountain pose again, ground those feet in. So from here, draw the pelvic floor up, zip those pants up, crown of the head lifting up like someone's pulling you up with a string of white light, lengthening through the spine. So right now, we're grounded down, rooted down. We're gonna extend those beautiful wings out. Palms are facing the floor. Fingertips are spread wide. And I'm just getting a set up, slowing down the breath. From here, we're gonna extend those feet out. And you wanna have the ankles just meeting the wrist bones. So as far as you need to go with that. Keep the navel drawn in. We're gonna start with the right side. So right side, all we have to do is turn that right foot out. So automatically, our body wants to turn this way. Stay focused, stay facing the front side, and just take a peek. So the middle of the back foot, where the arch sen sends itself upwards, should be in alignment with the front uh, heel. 
get yourself set up for there, and then slowly exhale as you sink deep into that lunge. Now, the back foot, I'm gonna move my block here so you can see, the back foot has a tendency to wanna roll in. You wanna try and make that connection with the full force of that four corners of the foot. So what does that mean, the ball of the foot, the back heel, and then the little piggy and the big toe, if you got them. If you don't have all of your toes, I apologize, and you are doing fabulous. <laughs> so from here, we're gonna reach the gaze to the right middle finger, sink a little deeper if you can. And now we have a tendency to wanna do this, or we wanna do this, because sometimes we wanna hold on to the past too much, Sometimes we're too concerned with what's going on in the future. In order to stay balanced, stay steadfast in our core, we stay present in the center. We look towards the future, we know we have a past, and we stay centered in the middle, the present. And you're gonna use your ujjayi breath as you smooth through this pose. And then coming out of it, exhale, straighten that leg, turn that foot forward, smooth the spine here through a few breaths, and then we're just gonna to switch to the other side, get yourself set up. You should be in alignment, but just make sure you are. And then coming out of this, inhale, reach the arms high above, and exhale, float them down, walk the feet back in. All right, so moving on to our final pose here for this week, our locust or little grasshopper pose. So since you're going to be using your, um, rib cage and your pelvic floor. If you're a little uh, sensitive in those areas, I would suggest using a blanket uh, underneath you. If you have sensitivity in your legs, you can always use a bolster or roll up a towel uh, to kind of help lift those muscles. So this pose, Shalabhasana, we're gonna come down to our mat, rest our bellies, rest the forehead. We're going to bring the feet so the big toes are facing one another. We're going to extend the arms back, palms facing the body, fingertips together. We're going to inhale, lift those legs up. Now you can hold here, and this could be part of your yoga challenge this week. To come into locust, we're going to lift the body up stretch those fingertips to try and reach the toes. And that way your scapula or your shoulder blades are trying to kiss behind you. You're drawing the navel in, your pelvic floor and lower rib cage are so connected to the mat. So you're really strengthening and supporting that lower spine. Keep the big toes turning inward. Now, if you want, you can hold here and you can lower every few moments if you want. So we're gonna inhale, lift and raise, and exhale, slowly come back down. Just make sure that you're setting yourself up each time. So if this feels anywhere of pain on your back, you can lower the leg, lower the forehead, but keep those arms engaged, keep the legs reaching for the back wall, big toes pointing inwards. And coming out of this pose, let everything rest down, Place the hands next to your heart center and rock yourself back into Balasana or Child's Pose, smoothing that spine out. You can rock side to side, take a few breaths, and then come back up and you are finished. So again, seated uh, forward bend for one minute, our monkey variation pose for uh, 30 seconds on each side. Warrior two pose, which is uh, one minute on each side. And then finally our locust pose for one minute. So for a full coverage and to join along with the challenge, subscribe and check out JWA Fitness or go to our core pages on Instagram and Facebook. Namaste.